Hi, community. Welcome, friends, friends new and old. I shouldn't say old. Maybe we're old friends, I don't know. Um, I'll just say hi all in the chat. But um, Jen, what are you grateful for? Um, let me know in the chat. What are you grateful for? I am grateful for, I just had two days uh, I spent two lovely days in Long Beach with a whole bunch of colleagues. Maybe some of you were there at the WACAT conference, the Western Association for College Admission Counselors. Some of some folks are probably still there, so I might be like talking to the wrong crowd because I, I came home early um, to just be with my girls, be with my daughter who had a tooth extracted, a seven-year-old having a tooth extracted. Sounds terrible, right? Yeah, but I am grateful for the opportunity was so, so, so lovely to be able to connect with people in person. There's Linda. Hey, I'm grateful to have seen you, Linda. Um, and um, just a chance to connect and to be like, oh, you're real again. And we did, there was some hugging that happened. There was some really wonderful speeches. We've got a new incoming president of WACAC, Kirby Walker, who's just the best. Um, so I'm grateful for an association, a community of, of wonderful folks. Uh, let's see, Elaine's grateful for birds in the backyard. I love it. Amanda's mentioning my husband finally brought my office chair back upstairs. <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm glad to have y'all here. Today we're talking about outlining. Um, there's a little poll, by the way. I'm curious. How, it looks like half of you are signed up for CEG Live. In fact, precisely half. And some of you aren't signed up for it, but I'll explain what that is. Um, we've got a few IECs currently taking a course and a few IECs who are not taking a course. And then we've got other folks. Let us know who you are if you are other folks. You might be tulips blooming, or maybe you're grateful for tulips blooming. Um, and yay for celebrating Easter, Kristen. So let's take a, a quick look at the agenda today. Um, do I want to share with you a Google Doc? I think I'm just going to tell you what the agenda is. We're gonna talk about outlining. I'm gonna start with why outlining is so important and why I think students skip it because I totally would have been that student to have skipped outlining. Um, why students tend to not, uh, sorry, that's that's what I just said. Uh, two example outlines. I'm gonna walk through some nice examples and you'll see, I'll, I'll probably go quickly through the essays that they led to. I won't spend a lot of time on the essay itself because I mostly wanna stay back thinking and talking about the structure part. Um, I'll go through a mini how-to, how to outline a challenges-based essay, how to outline a, a non-challenges-based essay. Um, I'll talk about four elements to look for in a personal statement. I've talked about these before, but I'll just touch on those briefly. And then I'll share with you a little bit about the, um, how you can guide students to a great outline using this choose your own adventure tool. Part of today, so uh, the main thing part of today is PD. It's just like getting you, you know, resources. And I'm going to be sharing my screen with some different ones. I also, though, want to use this as an opportunity to talk to you about CEG Live because I'm so excited to share it with you. And so CEG Live, let me just give you a quick, quick run through of what it is. And then I'm happy to answer any questions about it. Half of you are already on it. So forgive me if this is repetitive for you. But this is just the 90 second version. CEG Live is basically summer college essay boot camps for schools and organizations. And it's a combination of a few things. It's virtual workshops, one on the personal statement, one on the application supplemental essays, one on the UCs. We're leading these all this summer. It's also PD, like this right here. And it's this choose your own adventure tool, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, the personal statement courses that I'm doing this summer are, you know, the dates are right here. So it's late May, early June, mid-June, and then early August. And students can choose between two different times. And, um, and then we're doing this application of supplemental essay. So how do you write the YS essay? How do you write the extracurricular essay? We're doing those in mid-August. Again, it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Students can pick between two different times. And we're doing the UC personal insight questions in July. Again, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So students will get started. So they'll feel like they go through the three-day you know, boot camp experience. They've got to start. And then it's off to on the, either on their own, working on the essays, or if you want to say, hey, share with me your Google Docs, because you happen to meet with your students over the summer, great. But if not, you can just let them work on their own because the, the way the course is set up, it walks them through that. Um, and you'll see everything on here. I'll just, I'll put this link in the chat um, if that's interesting to you. Um, so, oh. hey, hi, Susan. Volunteer with a group of first-gen students prepping for college applications. Awesome, thanks, welcome. 
Um, yeah, Christy, I'm grateful for WACAC too. Yeah, here, here. Okay, so let's jump right into the content because I'm I'm not someone who likes to dilly dally. Actually, you know what? I do want to dilly dally for just another minute because I want to share with you a poem. This is a poem that if you were at my session, and I imagine only a very few of you were, um, you'll hear this again. But I, I liked hearing this poem the second time too. But it's National Poetry Month. And I wanted to just share with you briefly this poem. Some of you, I've, I've shared this in like three different sessions now. So if you heard this from me, again, forgive me. But most of you probably haven't heard this poem. It's Small Kindnesses by Danusha Lamaris. I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs to let you by. Or how strangers still say, bless you when someone sneezes. A leftover from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to the person handing it, to smile at them and for them to smile back, for the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder and for the driver in the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other now so far from tribe and fire. Only these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwelling of the holy, these fleeting temples we make together when we say, here, have my seat. Go ahead, you first. I like your hat. That's my reminder to myself to slow down. Slow down and enjoy some poetry, Ethan. Don't rush to, don't be in such a hurry, Ethan. That's what I'm saying to myself right now. <laughs> okay. So let, let, me, let me walk you through um, some outlining. And, and I'm gonna take maybe like 20, 25 minutes on this. This will be sort of the bulk of what we do together today. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, here we go. Okay. So this is the Choose Your Own Adventure tool. If you're interested in this, by the way, and you're an IEC, we have a little form that, that Ashley will share with you. You have to, in order to get access to this, you have to be on a course, but we're gonna set it up so that IECs can have access to it and give access to their students. We've just figured out pricing. So we're gonna, Ashley will share a form if you're interested in this, just fill out the form with your name and email and, um, and we'll get back to you. We, we, we're, we just, we're going on a retreat next week. The, when we get back, we're going to send out an email and be like, here's how you can get access if you're not EC. So until then, stand by. But here are the goods inside it. So when it comes to outlining, I'm just going to kind of go over some of the basics here. I think that oftentimes students <laughs> don't outline um, because they don't think they need to, right? They're like, I'm pretty sure I can just write it. This was me in high school. You know, and I thought I can just jump into this. And then I, or, you know, some students think that outlining might be a good idea, but they think it's going to take too long. And what I say to those students is like, after doing this for whatever, 12, 15 years, depending on if you count grad school, outlining does actually end up save time. So it's, it's a stitch in time saves nine thing. And then many students just don't know how, what goes in a personal statement outline. So that's what we're going to try and tackle today. Here's an example of a montage outline. A montage is basically an essay that's not about a challenge. It's got some other connective theme. In this case, this student was writing about her laptop stickers. Now, a basic outline for a montage includes probably some kind of intro. It has, if we're talking about laptop stickers, we need to know what is the laptop sticker. So in this case, one of the stickers of the student was a, a sticker that said we, and it had a heart and it said design. And what the student did is she basically named some values that she wanted to show using that sticker. So we heart design, she wants to show her art side, design side and experimentation side. So what it is, is it's an example and what are the values that you wanna show? And then if the student wants to get more into the details, you know, I spent my weekend designing websites, I, I do graphics for companies. These, this could be what would maybe be in the paragraph. So essentially this is a nice outline for a paragraph. And if you'll notice here, this is like the so what question. Like, so what? So you did this stuff, what did it do? Well, it helped me develop my own style. Cool. And then the next paragraph, what are some other stickers? So she's got this sticker that says common threads and that shows her authenticity and open-mindedness. So again, 
It's the sticker itself, whatever the thing is that connects back to your theme and then the values. Okay, here's another one, LOL, you're not Harry Styles. Here are the values that the sticker represents for her. And then here's how that value manifests in her life. Wash, rinse, repeat. So a simple montage outline might look something like this. And as you can see here below, here's what the essay sounds like. The intro, I'm not gonna read you the whole essay, I'm just gonna read you the first few paragraphs so you can kind of see how this turned into an essay. So she writes, my laptop is like a passport. It's plastered with stickers all over the outside, inside and bottom. So it's nice, she's starting visual. We can kind of see the way the essay, the, this, what these laptop stickers look like. And then she answers, so what here? Each sticker is a stamp representing a place I've been, a passion I've pursued or community I belong to. These stickers make for an untraditional first impression at a meeting or presentation, but it's one I'm proud of. Let me take you on a quick tour. And so what she's doing is essentially setting us up with visuals. Hey, this is me getting ready to take you into these, uh, you know, these stickers. And then each paragraph represents a different sticker. I'm gonna show you in a second how to, a simple outlining exercise. So this We Heart Design one, bottom left corner, art has been a constant for me for as long as I can remember. Today, my primary engagement with art is through design. Notice those are, she's just explicitly naming the values, but give us some details. I've spent entire weekends designing websites and social media graphics for my companies. So what? Design means more to me than just branding and marketing. It gives me the opportunity to experiment with texture, perspective, and contrast, helping me refine my professional style. So, and it basically every single paragraph kind of repeats this structure. We learn a whole bunch of the different sides of her. Okay, so here's a simple exercise that students can use in order to test out a, whoops, let me just, yeah, that's it. I'll use the values exercise. So if you Google values exercise, or you probably know where to find it if you've had a 10 minute conversation with me. <laughs> um, a way to test out a topic is pick something that the, let's say the, something the student's thinking of writing about. Uh, like for example, let's say the student is thinking about writing about, um, I'm seeing flowers on my wallpaper here. So it's like, I want to use uh, gardening. Let's say, I mean, you've got, you, I don't know if you've had a student who does gardening, but let's use gardening as a potential topic. And all I'm doing here is I'm writing gardening at the top of a piece of paper. It's probably too small to see, so I forgive me, but it says gardening at this top of a piece of paper. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how many different values I can connect gardening to. So let's see, I can connect, actually, let's, let's, do, let's do this together. What are some values that you could connect to gardening with me? Just put them in the chat here. And I call this my topic tester. Because if we can connect quite a few values to gardening, and certainly if we do this together, we're going to crush this. But let's see if we can come up with one, two, three, four. Let's see if we can come up with five. And there are going to be some obvious ones, like I could connect gardening to nature, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. But whether you garden or not, are there some values here that you see that you could connect with? So I'm going to go slow, so it'll give you a chance to, because there's also a 15-second delay as I'm talking to you. So I could connect gardening to... family. What else? Growth. Nice. I see that as a double meaning. I like it. Self-expression. Cool. Yeah, that seems cool. I'm looking for ones that are a little bit uncommon. It might be surprising. And also values that make my head explode with possibilities. <laughs> Presence. That's nice. Yeah. Being present. Love it. Not that the other ones aren't nice, but I'm just like, writing down the ones that are jumping out to me. Patience. Thanks for that one. Kavita. Yes. Resourcefulness. Yep. Yeah. Creativity. That Kavita, I can't get two of yours. These are so good. I can barely keep succulents alive. Yeah, quiet. I love quiet. Hmm, trust. Ooh, I don't even know where that one. Dirty green work for beautiful reward. Ooh, what do we call that? That's lovely. I'm going to, I don't know what we call that. D-G-W-F-B-R. That's what I'm going to write that one for a beautiful reward. Okay, so here is my outline. I, we've just outlined a personal statement together, haven't we? And I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so you can see all of what I'm writing. There we go. Gardening. Here's my gardening essay. 
gardening has taught me a lot about like, and we'd probably open with some kind of gardening, you know, metaphor. I don't know, probably something not metaphor, but like I'd probably use sort of something visual, kind of like this laptop stickers essay, right? And I, maybe it has to do, maybe this first paragraph has to do with family and it's me gardening with whoever taught me to garden. And in my case, it's not someone who taught me, but what I, the reason I wrote down family is that I think about time that I've spent gardening and it's not a lot, but it is some with my wife and daughter and the way that that's connected us. Um, but this isn't the only way we nurture our relationship. And then I would talk about other ways that we nurture our family relationship, whether it's sitting down together for a meal. I mean, we, we eat we eat often three meals together, but usually two meals together. All of our breakfasts and dinners are almost without fail together. So what I just did is I said, first part of the paragraph, here's how family and gardening connect, right? But what are some other ways that we nurture the relationship, which I'm using as sort of like the segue into like how family is important to me and how that manifests in my life. Next paragraph, being present. How does gardening make you present? Give me two, three sentences. Gardening, when I'm in the presence of nature, give me a couple sentences, but that's not the only thing that I do to like stay present or that keeps me present or that I find flow. Right. And then give me a couple more sentences about what, what other things. So we're really focusing on this value. So these values become kind of the heart of the paragraphs. Right. And we do the first part of the paragraph connects back to the topic. And the next part of the paragraph, if we like, talks about how that value manifests in other areas of our life, because then we're expanding on the value. We're making it less about gardening and more about the values, right? The parts of ourselves that we want to show. Second chances. That's a lovely one too, Lainey. I love that one. Ritual. Bruce is another great one, right? You, you know how this works, but I just want to show you how simple it can be. Like, cool, we just outlined an essay in like five minutes. Now, of course, it has to come from the students' brainstorming exercises. We talked last time about those. This might be something from their I love or I know exercise. You can basically help them pick anything from their I know. And the more that they know, the thing or love it, the more values they're going to be able to come up with, right? So the, what is the building blocks? We're talking about a, a topic, a values that it connects to, and we need examples. Examples that connect back to the topic, but also then examples of how this thing manifests in the person's life. Ta-da! That's one way to do an outline. That's the montage format. But it's not the only way to outline a personal statement. Because let's say, for example, a student is writing about challenges and that's gonna be a little bit different, right? Let me just, let me, let me say, if you've got questions about that or comments, feel free to throw them into the chat, okay? Narrative outlines are often different. Narrative outlines, when they're challenges, when I say narrative, I mean challenges based, are often students are dealing with challenges. They're dealing with effects of those challenges stuff that they did about it, and then stuff that they learned. So an example from a past student, you know, this was developed from the feelings and needs exercise, which you've probably heard of. If not, you can Google it. But essentially here were the challenges that the student faced. But I think it's really important, in some cases more important to give us a sense, not just of the challenges, but what impact did it have on you? Money was tight. My brother and I had to take care of each other. I avoided going on certain school trips. My grades started to slip. These are the effects. And if possible, this is in the first third, maybe the first half of the essay. Challenges and effects. Maybe a paragraph on one and then a paragraph on the other. Or if it's a, a lot, you can do a paragraph and then challenge, the challenges and effects and then more challenges and more effects. What did you do about it? Notice the active verbs here. Took care of my youngest brother, became my own teacher, learned how to do all these things. These things all ended up in the essay found a job to help pay bills. Encouraging students to use active verbs, so important. Because now I get a sense of this is the, how do I, one of the things I'll say is like, how do I visualize you doing all these things? So how did you, you know, meet your needs basically? And then what did you learn from the experience? And for this, I often just go to this values exercise and I ask students, what did you learn? What is it, global awareness, meaningful work, trust, use this values exercise. And I'm not going to go through the whole essay now, but what you'll see, I'll just show you the structure. Here's a student who faced some challenges. His father was arrested when he was young. And what happened? Money was tight as a result. Um, he also had another challenge related to his stepfather being a chronic alcoholic. And then his he had a younger brother. So some effects. Mom continued working. Fernando's care was left to Jose and me. So it goes back and forth between challenges and effects. And then he introduces a new challenge 
finding out he was undocumented. He found out at 16, he was undocumented. What happened as a result of that? Effects, avoided going on school trips, was discouraged from meeting new people. How did you feel? I felt isolated and at times disillusioned. Another effect, my grades started to slip. But over time, turning point, I grew determined to improve the quality of life for my family and myself. And this is all the stuff that he did about it. There's a lot of stuff. You know, he became his own teacher, became resourceful, fixing shoes with strips of duct tape, brought his grades up, started getting involved in music, started tutoring, all this awesome stuff. So what? What did he learn? There's so much I have yet to do. Here are all these things I want to do. Dance the tango, solve a Rubik's Cube. And I want to see my younger brother grow up. I'll do as much as I can from now on, not because I have to, because I choose to. One of the student's core values was autonomy. And this really exemplifies that. I choose to, I want to be able to take control of my life. So the outline for the narrative structure goes challenges, effects, what I did about it, what I learned. You'll notice in between here, there's like a feeling, you know, that sometimes I think, so that's, and that's part of the effects, like the effect that it had externally, but also the effect that it had on me personally, emotionally can go into this effects section as he does kind of subtly there. And that's really, I mean, that was long, that was shorter than 20 minutes, but that's the gist of how to, you know, how to create an outline. So I want to pause there for a second and see if folks have any questions about this, because this could be a very short PD. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've got other things that I want to show you, but I want to see if anybody has any questions. I'm going to take a sip of water. While you're thinking, or actually really while the delay is happening on this platform that we're using, <laughs> I want to go to, I mentioned, what are those four qualities that, you know, students should be looking for? If you've read my book or you've been on one of my courses, you know which ones I'm going to be talking about here in a second. And you'll see these qualities in those essays that I just read. Um, but these are the four qualities that I'm such a fan of. And I keep coming back to them. I presented at WACAC yesterday on, the, on these. And I, like, I look at great essays and I see them again and again. Maybe what I'll do is actually, how many... Probably most of you were not on that session that I, that I presented at WACAC. So I might just give a little piece of that because I one of the things I covered was how to stand out with the common topics. So I might do a little piece of that. Um, so anyway, these are the qualities, core values, information. Can you name four to five of the author's core values just in the outlines that I showed you? I mean, if the student's doing a nice job outlining, they're gonna, you're going to be able to find those values. In the first, the laptop stickers, I say we've got creativity. We've also got social impact. I didn't really get into that one. Authenticity. For the second essay, we've got that students talking about being resourceful, you know, connecting with his family. Vulnerability. The, the first essay was less vulnerable. The laptop stickers does have some personal details, but it, it, you know, it's it's not that sort of vulnerability. I would say, like in the sort of classic sense of like revealing stuff about your past that is, you know that some people might be ashamed for. I'm not saying that you have to be ashamed. You have to reveal things you're ashamed for, but you know, the, the challenges that you've been through, for example, are things you haven't quite worked out. So the, the second one is I think more clearly vulnerable. The so what moments you can see in the, in the montage, what I often find is that those so what moments, let me just go back to this. Those so what moments, you'll find them more at the ends of the paragraphs. Um, so for example, in the laptop stickers essay, you know, after the student has told us that design and art are part of her life, so what? Well, design is more to me than just a branding marketing. It gives me the opportunity to experiment with texture, perspective, and contrast, helping me refine my professional st style. That's a nice insight. Um, insight, uh, if in case you're wondering, what, what the heck am I talking about when I say insight? Um, this is, I, I, I shared this with some of you, but not all of you. Um, insight to me is, you know, you've got stuff that, let me zoom in here. <laughs> this is all known knowledge. This is from my friend Duncan's analogy. And there's stuff that you know, this is your insights. And then there's stuff that someone else knows. Let's say your college admission essay reader. And then there's stuff that overlaps, which is like maybe some stuff that most people know. And the insights that you can show are the stuff that's in your circle. <laughs> Okay, uh, that could be insights on your life or insights that you've developed in the world, or 
it's stuff that both of you know, but you're saying it in an uncommon way, in a way that like pops or sparks for us. Oh, cool. I never thought about saying it quite that way. Like small kindnesses, this poem is a great example. Uh, there's stuff that, I mean, this is not, Denise Lamaris isn't saying stuff I don't know, but the way that she's saying it, we have so little of each other now. I'm talking about these fleeting moments, so far from tribe and fire. Like that's just beautiful, the way that she's expressing that. The insight into like, yeah, we're a long way from when we used to gather around by the fire and connect in these deep, you know, ritualistic ways. We have our small rituals, but what I think, you know, the author is saying here is that these brief moments of exchange, this is what we have left. I mean, these are the, where something holy is happening in these tiny little engagements. Like that's not a, a new thought, but it's said in a, it's said in an, an uncommon way. Um, so let me make sure that I'm sharing my screen. I think I am. If I'm not, I apologize. No, I'm not. <laughs> I wasn't sharing my screen at all. Whoops. Sorry. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll just, I just want to like, I'll, I'll pop that, that poem up so you can kind of look back at it if you want to. I'm probably gonna get a message from Ashley. Hey, Ethan, you're sharing the wrong screen. Do you use a graphic organizer when developing an outline? Sometimes, yeah, here's what it looks like. I mean, I don't use a graphic organizer like Miro or something cool like that, but if you have one and you use one, will you please let me know? Cause I'd love to see it. But what I encourage students to use is inside the tool and is this workbook. So for a montage when they're creating their outline for the laptop stickers one, I'll encourage them to like, here, put your values here, put your examples in. And if you can come up with some insights. So if that's what you mean by graphic organizer, then yes. Um, but I don't use anything fancier than this. And then when it comes to narrative structure, narrative outline, I'll just have students bullet point the things because once they bullet point these things, then they can kind of turn those into sentences that will become paragraphs, you know? What if your very challenged students have trouble discovering what they've done? Then Susan, I have a whole bunch of questions to answer, to, to help them think about this. So this is more, once they're in the, beyond the outlining phase, well, actually here, let's just go down to, so challenges and what I did about it. So here's what I would encourage them to look at. Um, here's a bunch of questions to help students think about the, what I did. Did you accomplish anything? If so, what evidence do you have? You know, we grew club membership by 50%. Did you gain any management or leadership skills? What people skills or communication skills did you gain? Any financial skills? How did you put your creative or design skills to use? Whom did you help and how? Did you organize anything? So a lot of these questions will help get their mind going. And then as we look down in the revising section, <clears throat> which is what we're gonna talk about next time, there's some stuff in here about just more questions to get them into the what I did about it. So here are 11 more ideas for improving the, the what I did part of it of the story. What did you do as a result of or thanks to your challenges? What moment changed things for you? Was there a turning point? Did you take responsibility for anything you hadn't before? I give some examples in here. So there are 11 of these. Where did you, did you go anywhere that you hadn't before either physically or mentally? Did you earn money to pay for anything? Become more engaged with or take action around a social justice issue or cause? Did you help anyone? Did anyone help you? What problems did you tackle? What technology did you learn or did you use? So these are 21, oh, no, there are 11 here. 20, yeah, 21 with the other 10 questions to ask them. And it gives examples. And then here are some other ideas. So maybe it's 27 ideas. <laughs> Did, your, did any of your roles change? Um, what did you become more curious about during that time? So this should give them enough to be able to thicken that middle part of their story, particularly if that's a marginalized part of their story. In other words, particularly if they feel like they quote unquote didn't do anything, this is gonna help them see, oh wait, yeah, maybe I did do some stuff, you know? Okay. Um, Oh, I was talking about the qualities. Let me just go back to that for a second. So, oh, it was already here. <laughs> that's that's gonna help. And, and interestingly, you know, those so what moments. Yes, they're gonna come at the ends of those paragraphs, oftentimes in a montage essay, 
And oftentimes they're going to come at the end of a you know, whole essay if it's writing about challenges. But certainly a, a student could, in different points, you know, answer that so what question and sort of make a thing pop. And when students are trying to come up with those insights, there's a whole module in here on in the revising section of like, um, sorry, I think it's in refining. Where is it? It's in revising. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Why am I having trouble finding it? Oh, I know, because it's it's called something else in that section. Here are 10 ways to bring more insight into the essay. And we'll talk about this a little bit next time when we're doing the outlining. The reason it's not, I couldn't find it in the narrative path is because it's in the revising section. It's in the what I learned. Um, so there's ways to bring more insight into the essay. So again, we'll talk about that a little bit next week. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for a second because that's essentially the basic content. And I like when PDs are efficient and that's sort of the efficient version of this. Um, and I wanna just open it up for Q&A for a little bit and see what other questions we have on outlining. And I'll stop sharing my screen for just a minute and I'll take a sip of water. Yeah, I said I would do 25 minutes and that was pretty close to 25. I'd also love to hear other folks' ideas. If you have thoughts about, oh, here's how we do it, or here's how I do it, or let me tell me more about outlining. What have you learned through your experiences? Pray tell. We gotta figure, we gotta get on a platform that doesn't have this delay because if we were on Zoom, you would be like, dut, 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 and I'd hear from you right away. Otherwise, we have to kind of like chill and wait. Um, let me let me let's re let me reshare the link. Actually, Ashley, if you wouldn't mind resharing the link, if folks are interested, if you're an IEC and you want to get access to the Choose Your Adventure tool, fill in that form. Um, and um, yeah, if you're interested in joining CEG Live, it's really easy. If you're a high school counselor, you can just sign up all your students at once. If you're not already signed up, I know that half of you are, but for the other half, um, Stephanie asks, when I have a really reluctant writer, sometimes I'll just let them talk and I'll capture while they're speaking. Yeah, totally. Totally. I've done that. In fact, I did it with that student that you, you were talking about. It was like hearing him talk and like typing in bullet points, some of the things. Yeah. So I'm with you. Sometimes I have kids, says Lainey, do them on note cards that they can physically manipulate them to build connections. Yeah. That's so screenwriter of you. I love that. So like, and I don't have it on the wall right here, but like imagining just different, you know, cards with ideas and you can kind of move them around. That's a really cool way of doing it. <laughs> Brennan's asking, how do we get kids, get kids to for sure outline, um, require it if they want us to review work? I mean, what I would say, Brennan, is have them do two or three outlines. Um, and that's the way that the tool is set up. So after, let me just show you real quick. Um, after students do like, outline an idea inside the tool. So let's say, for example, they've, they've outlined a narrative um, essay, writing your first draft. So when they click write your first draft, mm -mm -mm -mm. oh, actually, this kind of walks them through how to outline the, the first draft. There's some more tips on this. Um, let me, sorry, let me go back to this. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before the outlining. Brainstorming one or two more topics. So once they've got an idea they've started to work on, I encourage students to brainstorm one to two more topics. And for students who are brainstorming a narrative or challenges based essay, I give them these four reasons to probably brainstorm one to two more topics. One, your first idea might not work and I want you to have other options because don't you hate it when your student comes to you with an idea and you can tell they've worked on it a lot and they just don't have any other options. And you're like, ugh. So like, if your first one doesn't work, I want you to have other options. Two, you might come up with a better idea. How often is our first idea our best idea? Not, not, I don't know. Third, you might be able to combine your second or third idea, and then it makes for a more interesting essay oftentimes. And then yes, I do the thing that you're saying, Brennan, is like, this is your homework assignment before moving on to the next module. So I would, I would, I, we're, we're drawn from the same bag of tools. Like I would say yes to that. So the action item here is like create at least two outlines. And I would say either do um, two, two more outlines, um, one narrative, and one montage or two montage outlines. And then it kind of walks them through how to do that. And it like, it's like, hey, click these seven montage paths. So it like jumps them into this part where they basically go through this part of the section. So this section of the essay. So I love it when students do multiple ones and I want them to come to me with like at least two ideas. Um, 
So yes, require it if they, if they want to review work and require them to do a couple. Rebecca asks, if a student's interested in a common major, say engineering, but hasn't done much with that. Yep, I get it. Can their essay simply just be a nice window into their life instead of trying too hard to connect it to the field of study? Yeah, totally. I mean, especially I would say, you know, if students are, and we, Erica, I like what you're saying. Will you explain what a reverse outline is to folks who are, who are here? Um, yeah, I, I would say, Rebecca, especially if that student is applying to schools where they have Y major essays, because they're already going to be explaining Y engineering there. But I think it can be nice if, have a student do this kind of bubble thing for whatever they want to write about, and then have them do a second one for engineering. So write engineering at the top of the page and then connect it to all the values. What they're going to find is probably some of these things overlap. So in some cases, like one student that I knew wanted to write about, it wasn't gardening, it was plants, but close. So she wrote, did one for plants and she wanted to study business. And guess what? The business, the plants essay became a business essay in a really cool way. So I, you know, I wouldn't, I don't want them to force it, but I, I also don't want the reader to be like, kind of thrown off. Like here's this whole essay about gardening plants and it has nothing to do with business. And they're like, I want to be a business major. And it's like, okay. I mean, I, I could see that being interesting. And I think for some students it can be kind of complimentary, but if you can find some of those overlapping values, because I mean, and it's not hard to do it, but like, as I look at this, you know, being present, um, being patient, like these are things that would be useful in the, in the business world or in the engineering world. But thinking about, I, I would want the reader to be like, oh yeah, these are skills, qualities the students developed. Those I could see those even abstractly being being useful in the business world. Once they're on, once once they're getting into values, like those, a lot of them are not going to be, you know, doing doing. I love I love this, the, the doing the gritty work for a beautiful result. I mean, that's going to connect to business too. So anyway, to have them do two potentially, and see if they want to talk about their connections. Totally partnering with faculty. Yes, absolutely. Send your faculty these videos, like. Have them sign up for the tool, you know, get them in here. I want, I want them to have these resources too. Because then it, it also using these terms like narrative and montage can give a common language. If a student gives me a draft, says Lainey, without having met for the outline, I still make them turn it into an outline. Yes, that step often causes them to revise anyway. Yes, that's, that's what a reverse outline is. At least that's what I'm understanding it to be. Um, and I think that's what Erica's talking about too. Let me see. Erica says, I have the students go through their draft paragraph by paragraph to see what they're trying to say in each paragraph. It often helps them recognize what's there, what's missing, and what order their ideas should be in. Yeah, so Erica and Lainey, it sounds like you're on the same page, and I'm on the same page with you. It's like, great, you've written this draft, now do one of these. <laughs> Tell me what the main value is you want to focus on. And then suddenly they're learning stuff. Because some students are more structured, they're more architect, right? Where they're more like, I wanna have all the pieces, but other students are kind of like, let's plant a seed, see where it goes. Let's just start free writing. We call it the gardener. I'm, I'm mixing my, now I'm overlapping my metaphors, but yeah, the student is the gardener who wants to just like explore and see where things go. For those students though, I would like, I want, I want them to be able to draw from the, the tools of the architect and be able to like zoom back and be like, what, what are the structures? It sounds like what you're doing too. How do we get access to the tool? Do students get access to the tool when they register for CG Lab? Exactly, Kalina. So once they're in, they'll get emails. Once you've got, once you sent the emails to Ashley, she'll basically sign them all up. And um, Ashley, will you remind me when do folks get? When do students get the access to the tool? Is it right before, or do they get it instantly? I'm I'm, I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Um, so Ashley will let you know. But yes, it, essentially, and and the 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 choose your own adventure tool is the curriculum that I use for the course. Uh, for the boot camp, I mean, when I'm doing that. How do you convince students they're writing about a cliche topic? Hmm. Well, you tell them. Oh, yes. Okay. Two weeks before the live session is when they get access. Great. So it depends on the topic, Juliana. And this is this is great because I was saying I'd love to get into a little bit of the content that I covered at WACAC. I'll probably do a whole session on it at some point, or I'll do it as like a mini course or something. But how do you convince students they're writing about a cliche topic? Well, First of all, you just tell them like you say, first of all, by the way, let me, let me just pick the, the language just a second. I don't think that cliche topics, I think cliches are not as much about what you write, but how you write it. Like cliches are in the telling. So there are common topics, but I've seen great essays written on common topics. Like 
One of my favorite essays of the last couple of years was on food. A lot of students write about food, but the way the student wrote about it made it not cliche. So if a student is, let's say, let's first of all, let's go with the opposite problem. Let's say a student thinks that a thing that they're gonna write about that maybe they should write about is cliche. Like maybe they've been through extraordinary challenges, but you know that those challenges really impacted them. And you're like, hey, that might be an interesting topic to pursue, but they're like, oh, it's gonna blend in with every other student's essay. Well, for students like that, I would say, well, it's, it's in the telling, it's in the details, the specifics that you use that will help your essay stand out. So, but I hear what you're saying. It's like, what if a student wants to write about volleyball? First of all, what I would say to them is like, if you're gonna write about an extracurricular activity, probably it's gonna be harder to stand out. And this goes a little bit to last week's stuff. And I don't know if you caught it last week, but if you didn't, Juliana, go back and check out last week's session, which was on how to decide on a topic. And the, the simple framework that I gave was when it comes to, for example, choosing a montage essay, one of the things that I'll say is like, uh, this is like a non-challenges based essay, the more uncommon the topic is and the more elastic, by elastic, I mean like, is it stretchy enough to talk about a lot of different values? The more likely it is to stand out. Whereas if it's a common topic and not elastic, it's gonna be a lot harder to stand out because a lot of other students are writing about volleyball or the mission trip or you know, sports, exactly, right? A lot of students are running in sports. So first of all, just tell them, you know, the more common it is, the harder it's gonna be to stand out. So what do you do? I mean, it's like, how do you get them to not write about it? You help them come up with other options. Now, my favorite exercises, the ones I went over last week, are all in here. So when you go to the left side here, brainstorming your content, there's a 20 minute video that students can walk through. And I know a 20, 24 minute video, sorry. And I know that's a little bit long for a video, but I promise you, if a student pays attention and does the work there, they're gonna have, I can't promise you this, but chances are they're gonna have anywhere from two ideas to 25 ideas just by going through those exercises. So I think the best way to get somebody out of a bad relationship, <laughs> yes, I'm double speaking here, is by encouraging them to consider other options and then by getting them to see that, oh wait, there are some other cool possibilities out there for me. And so I would say, take them through great brainstorming, okay? But if a student insists on, um, let's see, uh, the quick guide, here's my quick guide to common or cliche topics. And I'm not, I think I went through this briefly last time, so I'm not gonna go cover it in depth here, but I'm gonna put it in the chat in response to you so you can take a look at it later. And there's my, um, my answer. Um, and this is my whole guide to how do you help a student stand out? And it's connected to that values exercise where essentially, you know, the short version of it, sorry if this is re repeating for some of you, but, you know, with sports, we brainstorm, what are the common sports essays going to talk about? Discipline, hard work, perseverance, right? Let's not just agree not to write about any of those things. Instead, let's choose some uncommon connections. Like what has whatever volleyball taught you about um, accountability? Or what has volleyball, and you can brainstorm this in a group setting with them. What has volleyball taught you about inclusion? Or healthy boundaries? Those start to become more interesting essays. And you're really just encouraging them to connect it to uncommon values. And you can like challenge them live when you're with them or do it in a group setting. Some are just so wrapped up in their sports, their identity. Yep, totally. You know, I get you. I get you, Juliana. And, and for those students who are like, I've got to write about this, you go, okay. But brainstorm the cliche version, meaning what are those values that are going to like do two of these, right? Do the cliche sports one and have the student do it right, right there. And then, okay, now let's do the, the, the uncommon one. But reasons I suggest not to write about uh, extracurricular activities. Let me show you where this is inside the tool. So one of the paths that I suggest is the uncommon extracurricular activity path. And I had this big qualifier here at the start where I say, you maybe should not use an extracurricular activity as your personal statement topic. I wanna to try to convince you to not choose this method because one, a lot of schools will ask you to elaborate on an extracurricular activity in a separate supplemental essay, put it there. Also, a lot of students write about similar activities. So it can be hard to stand out. So this is me like saying, just tell them that. And then three, it takes a lot of time and energy to do well. So much, this is probably an advanced method. Here are some common extracurricular activity topics. These aren't like definitely don't do this, but they are a little bit like, you know, if you're writing about one of these things, these are uncommon or these are common. And then I go as far as to say like, what are the most common ones? The big performance essay, 
the big game essay, the sports injury, the mission trip. To me, those are the top four. If anybody has, a, I'm just curious, does anybody have any to add to this list? These are the most common ones that I see. But if you do chance decide to, you know, use this, use an extracurricular activity as your personal statement topic, if you can choose an uncommon extracurricular activity or what I said, make uncommon connections or use uncommon language, which is basically like say things in ways we wouldn't expect or haven't heard them before. And you'll see examples of these below. These are some uncommon extracurricular activity topics. I've seen students write about all of these things, I think. Not training animals, but that would, that would totally be a uncommon topic. And then there's an example essay below that. Yeah, parents' sickness. Yeah, totally. Other questions? Things we're gonna get into. Again, we're gonna get into revising a little bit more deeply next week. Today is just sort of like the outlining writing. Once they've got a great, like, the key to like, what do they need to get started is just a great outline, I think. And it could be as simple as those boxes that I was showing you for the montage or the bullet points if they're writing about a, a narrative challenges based essay. Oh yeah, gender identity. I think it is common, yeah. Anxiety, I'm saying. I'm not as big as like the big game essay, but my summer home. Yeah, Bruce, I hear you. Yeah, gender identity, I, I've seen quite a bit as well. It not, I mean, you probably agree, Juliana, not to the extent of like the sports injury, but that seems to be a pretty common one. But but what, what the, what's interesting about a gender identity essay is that it's a built-in challenges essay. And there's something interesting. There's something there worth sort of like puzzling through and figuring out. I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just me personally, but I'm interested in like hearing someone because it's so connected to identity and self-conception. So it's, and it's, it's vulnerable. It's probably getting into some core values and some insights. So there's a lot that's already working for that. So even though it's maybe somewhat common, if I think it's, I think it's easier to do that one well than like the we're down by three with six minutes to go, you know, essay. The problem for first gens is their language, their challenges are very similar. Poverty, non-English speaking parents, et cetera. Yep. And wh who I was talking to, Susan, when I showed that example essay is I'm talking like a way that you can help those students is just by showing them the specific outline, the, the outline structure, the simple outline structure, and then pointing out the specifics that, let me show you again, that the student uses, because um, I hear you. And that's why I wanted to talk about this one, is on the narrative side, how to outline a narrative draft, here it is. Like what helps this one stand out is some of these specifics of what I did about it. Like learn how to fix a bike is more specific than like learn stuff. You know, this is kind of general because it was like, it's, it hasn't gotten to the specific part yet, but taught myself how to play the clarinet, shattered this specific school swimming record. So these are like specific things. The student could get into the specific job they helped to pay bills. He didn't name it here because he used that job as a supplemental essay for another school. But yeah, I mean, and you've got to just, I mean, I think in that case, you got to just reassure them that like, if that feels like something they want to write about, that's really shaped them, go through these exercises to, to bring up the material um, and see what's there. The other thing is like with, 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 with the, with first gen population often Susan is that I think sometimes students feel like pressure or some anxiety around this being their personal statement topic. And what you can do is, especially if you're starting with them relatively early is you can just encourage them to explore it as a writing exercise and just take the pressure off and say, you don't have to write about this for your personal statement, but let's just write about it just to see what happens. Are you open to just writing about it? Ask them first, have you ever written about this? Because it may be that they, they haven't ever. And um, so it's like important to tread lightly um, and to just sort of be, you know, careful with them, but, and then to reassure them that nobody else has to see this, you know, you can write on this on your own. I don't need to see it even, you know, you can decide later so that there, there are points of decision. So in other words, I think this is like the anxiety that students have around uh, testing like SAT and ACT testing. Like they think that they have to decide right now if they're going to submit their scores, but no, all you have to decide first is like, do you want to prepare for the test? Like, do you want to take a practice test? Because these are things that you can do right now. You can't submit the scores now. So 
decide, and this is Akil Bello was, he did a webinar and talked about this, like decide first, do you want to prepare or not? And then you do some prep. Okay, cool. Or you do a practice test. Okay, cool. New decision point. Do I want to take the actual test? Yes or no? Okay, then I sign up for it. You take it. You get your scores back. Do I want to submit those scores? Yes or no? So right there are these decision points. So if you can kind of break it down, it's the same thing with the college essay. You can say, do you want to even think about these challenges right now? Because it may be that the answer is no. And then great, let's brainstorm other topics. Because we've got this whole montage side with seven different kinds of essays that you could think about writing, right? Which we can brainstorm in 20 minutes. Do you have, you want to do 20 minutes? Let's, let's think about something else. Let's say they do say yes. Okay. You do want to write about this? Okay. Or you do want to think about this? Okay, great. Do you want to write about it? Do you want to just do some free writing? Great. Here's an exercise, feelings and needs exercise that'll help you process through that. Cool. Do you want to turn this into an outline? If so, then you take the next step and it, it's it pretty much that feelings and needs exercise walks a student into an outline. This is all inside the narrative side, by the way. Okay, cool. Now you've got an outline. Do you want to write the draft? Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then once you've written the draft, do you want this to be your personal statement topic or not? Right. We can still go back at all these different points. So for students who are sometimes conflicted, I'll, I'll encourage them to brainstorm two different ideas. So let's do the challenges essay and let's do the gardening essay because gardening is really cool and you can still be vulnerable in a gardening essay. What students will often find is like they can bring in elements of their challenges to that larger themed essay that talks about other identities and other parts of themselves. So any other questions? What's on your brain or on your heart? Anything. I got to pause, I know, for another 30 seconds while you type things to me. I'm not seeing anything coming through at the moment, so I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to let us go. Um, I, I think sessions should be as long as they should be. So um, thanks for being here. And next week, or not next week, sorry, two weeks from today, we're gonna talk about how do you give great feedback? I'm gonna talk about a simple way to conceptualize the writing process, some do's and don'ts for that. Um, four questions that you can ask of any draft, like whether it's a montage or whether it's a narrative. I'm gonna talk through revising a montage or narrative. If you've got a sample essay you wanna bring, one of you, and I, and I can kind of use it on that, great. Otherwise I'll have an example that I can use. Um, and then I'm going to show you how inside the Choose Your Own Adventure tool, it pretty much answers any question a student's going to have. There's no reason I need to wait to show you that part. So let me just show you that really quick where that is. So in case, because maybe you're not here next week, um, let me just share my screen once more. So if you're um, trying to figure out where stuff is in the tool, just go to FAQ right there. And then I have a question about, you know, any part of this, outlining. Do I need to outline? Yes, here. <laughs> How do I outline my essay? Here's how to do the narrative and here's how to do the montage. Or maybe students are trying to figure out how to revise. You know, how do I build a stronger beginning for my narrative essay? There's stuff on that here. Uh, what if my examples aren't that strong? Here's how to answer that. So it answers um, as many of the questions as I could think of for this. Oh, oh, we've got more. Oh, now the questions are flooding in. Okay, let's stay for a few more minutes. Stephanie said, please answer Lindsay's questions. Okay, so how do you bring challenges into a montage essay? Do I have time to answer that today? I think I do. Let me show you. Um, if you search, let me just, I want you to watch me Googling this because that's how you'll be able to get to it. Here's my Google. Um, if you search LGBTQ essays, college essay guy, you'll see a really nice, um, essay. And if you go in here and search, this is me, you'll see a nice essay that's on a bunch of different identities. So the student, the theme of the student's essay was identities. I'm Mexican. I'm Chinese. I'm American. And the way the student wove in these different identities is, for example, uh, I'm Chinese. So listen to this, the utter preference for using chopsticks in every scenario and the unhealthy craving for rice with every meal. So these are qualities that connect to the student's Chinese identity. Um, my father's musical Cantonese conversations, my grandparents. So these are not challenges based things, but then he says they're constant inquiry asking, how is school? So there's implied pressure 
to be thinking about and being good at academics. The constant pressure to get good grades, my father's desire for me to become a doctor, and the never ending, how are you so bad at math, you're Asian? So some microaggressions or just straight up aggressions. So there's, there's some simple, subtle ways that challenges the students faced are woven in. Um, I'm American. All these ways that the student is American, shopping sprees at Target, constant diet of fast foods, going to football games on Friday nights, watching Netflix on Saturday nights, always watching my weight, always looking at others, always wishing, always wanting for more. So these are struggles that the student has that are woven in here. I'm Catholic. You know, what does that mean? Praying before each meal, saying, go away in the name of Jesus. Having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in. Turning to God when I see the horrors in the world and getting no response. So in short, and there's, there, there's there are more here, you know, in terms of the student's gay identity, you know, it's just a beautiful weaving in. And I'll just share this in the, in the chat here. This is also in the, um, in the tool. I should have shown you where it was in the tool. Sorry. Let me show you where it is in the tool. Sorry. <laughs> if you go to, I just, for, I forgot for a second that it was in the tool. Why wouldn't it be? Of course it is. It's a great essay. Identity. There you go. So when you click identity on the montage path side, you'll see this essay. There it is. This is me. And then beyond that, you'll see like a great analysis. Sorry, I just called my, what I wrote a great thing. You'll see an analysis of why it's great. That's what I meant to say. And then you'll see another essay that's on one identity, my pirate, pirate identity, not my pirate identity, but just the student's pirate identity. Ben asks the challenge. So anyway, that's, that's a good example of how to weave in those challenges. And there are so many ways to do that, but that's, that's a lovely one. Um, the challenges privileged kids face may not stack up to the challenges faced by their students, but are they, they are still challenges for them, but do they make for an interesting essay? I don't know. So the test for that, Ben, I would say is, so when they do this narrative path, <clears throat> what I suggest is they go through the feelings and needs exercise. And then when they're trying to decide on the topic, I give them this, you know, another, uh, sort of like X, Y axis is like, Difficult challenges with wow insights tend to make the essay stand out more. If it's meh, challenges and insights, you know, and how do they even know? But one of the things I'll ask is like, where do you think your essay topic lands on the spectrum of possible topics? <laughs> you know, and then I'll ask things like, are you forcing it? Are you writing about a challenge that wasn't actually much of a challenge? Like your Wi-Fi didn't work. Um, and then there are other things. Are you, you know, when you write about a mental health challenge, are you worried it'll sound like a sob story? So I try to tackle as many of the potential things that, but you know, we're not going to capture it all in like one blog page. This is why they need counselors like you to give them some advice. But I, again, if students are multiple brainstorming multiple topics, then hopefully they're seeing other ways to demonstrate their skills, qualities, interests, and values. Okay. Lindsay asks, how about politics? I've got a student that mentioned a pretty controversial topic. Um, so I feel two ways about this. One is like, it depends on, is this the main thing that they want to talk about? Like the, the, the centering question is what is the best way to demonstrate your skills, qualities, values, and interests? And what I would say is like, I would, I would direct students. If you, if there's something political that's important to you, I would ask, okay, first of all, what values are you wanting to show? Is there, if it's, you know, and, and, and if you're going to pick a side on a political issue, here's what I'll say and whether it's fair or not, it, it sort of is the way it is. Like college readers tend to be pretty liberal. So if you're taking a conservative point of view, it, depending on what it is, it can be riskier. That just sort of is a, I don't want to say it's a fact, but it's a, I don't know if many people will disagree with me there. So I can't, I think it kind of depends on your politics to be really honest. And Park Muth talks about this a little bit on our podcast, but it's, it, it is what it is. So what I would say is like, if you want to be safer, Focus on values. And if you want to show more about yourself, ask yourself, is there one of these structures like skill or superpower identities where I could weave in some of my political activism in a way that demonstrates my values, but that also shows other sides of me so that I'm not just this one belief or this one set of beliefs. So let's say a student is conservative and they are very pro-life, which for a reader who is pro-choice might be off-putting. I'll just use that as an example. If the student is worried about being defined as a 
ex, you know, student, let's say conservative student or whatever that thing is, then give us other identities so that we see more about who you are and give us what is that identifying with that political belief being pro-life or whatever it is, pro-choice, but pro-life might be more controversial because of the audience. Um, then, you know, broaden it out. Give me some other, like, and so it really comes back to like, why is the student? And if the purpose is to demonstrate the skills, qualities, and values, I think it's really important to, to think about what are the other sides of you that you're showing. So, yeah, <laughs> Graciela's agreeing with me and that's a shame. I, I hear you. And I think it kind of, it is as it is. And it's, so I'm trying to acknowledge, call it as I see it and acknowledge that I think there is a bias and shrug emoji. Yeah, Erica's got a good point. You can weave some of those politics into a supplemental essay if you want to. Community essay, for example. That's a great, great idea. I love that. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. And also so the recording will only be one hour so that future people will potentially watch it. Um, thank you all. It's great to see you and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.